Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about some of the uses of the Greek definite article. Uh, remember that the definite article is the, that's what we're saying, as opposed to a or an. So we're talking about a specific thing, but in Greek the definite article is used for much more than simply the, and we're going to explore some of those options today. So let's create a quick sentence. Pawo ten stratian. I am stopping the army. So this is fine. That's a great English translation. Let me let me write that out. I am stopping the army. So the verb contains the subject. This personal ending says I, and we don't need a Greek pronoun to say I. I, I am stopping the army. Well, what if I wanted to say in Greek that it was my army that I was stopping? They do have personal pronouns where we could say the army that is mine, using the genitive or something, but Greeks also were much more comfortable using letting the definite article uh, stand for a personal pronoun. Maybe I should say personal possessive pronoun. English is very finicky about this. We really like to use a personal pronoun. Uh, if I say, I wash my hands, we really need this to be my. Uh, if I just said, I wash the hands, um, people might wonder, well, what hands are you talking about? Um, in French, that's no problem. Uh, they would say, I wash the hands, les mains, and people would understand and intuit, well, yes, that my must be referring to, or that the must be referring to a possession. So if you come across this sort of sentence, I stop the army in Greek, and you know that the speaker is a general, um, you might think that pawotein stratian might be either I am stopping the army, or maybe more accurately, in this case, my army. So this happens. Uh, we have um, Shomardine gives the example age tain stratian. So again, similar idea. He, she, it is leading the army, but really it could be his or her army. Uh, for the Greeks, almost exclusively his, but there, there are some notable exceptions. Uh, that's what's going on. So we have, I guess let's make that our first case, is definite article where English prefers possessive. So that's one option that we can do, but there are more. So if we're talking in Greek about a class of nouns, um, often they'll want to use the definite article. So let's do this one, kind of magenta. Uh, so let's see. I want to pick a different example um, than the one that Shamardine uses. So, hi, Musai. Let's see, what could we do? What would be exciting? Um, <laughs> let's make it a very unmuse like uh, thing. Let's say the muses are stopping peace. Um, so, let's make this a plural. Pawo is, uh, is again our principal part, but we're going to need to make this third person plural in the present. Well, let's let's go let's go all out. Let's make this imperfect. Epau Wong short goes all the way back there. The muses were stopping, we're trying to stop. Um, and then let's make this really subversive. Make it tain erenen. Muses the muses were stopping the peace. They were fostering war. All right, so that's possible, uh, but what's going on here is we're saying the muses in particular, and this, this actually works well because there are nine of them and they can be specific, but let's not say that we're talking about nine muses. We're just talking about muses in general. Muses often are putting a stop to peace in this fictional world. 
we might want to translate this in English simply as muses, you know, tried to stop peace. It's a little bit tricky in the past tense. I probably shouldn't have done that. I should, probably should have left it um, pausi. Muses tend, you know, tend to stop peace, are stopping peace. That would be this version. So we're talking about muses as a class of agents. Uh, so that's that's our number two. Kind of bad example, but hopefully you got it. Um, and this is um, the definite article denotes a class. Not just a specific group of muses, but muses writ large, all sorts of muses. In English, we would just we would drop the definite article and just write. Uh, the, the other, let's do a kind of blue color here. Third case uh, will be different ways of talking about a normally kind of abstract noun. And we have dikaiosine uh, is probably our best. Um, well, let, let, let's. Uh, so, uh, Shelmerdine uses dikaiosine, but we can do something better. Uh, let, let's use that word for peace again. So, hey, erene, the peace. Um, and then this is skipping ahead a little bit, but that's fine. Agath, agathe, and then st. Peace is good. So we're saying here, literally, the peace is good. If we want to do it word by word, good is. We'll get to st in a while. But that, that's a bad English translation. We should really just consider hey, rene as, as the subject. Peace. Peace is good. That would be the uh, the best English translation of hey Irene Agathe Esti. So abstract nouns where where the Greeks will want to use an article and English will prefer no. Related to that, maybe we'll use a gold. Um, is with proper names. So here we we've learned a few. Let's do ha Xerxes. Good example of that capital Xi, which we don't see too often. And then let's make this, um, well, this is something that often didn't happen, but we can imagine it did. Uh, so, Hulk Xerxes stops, was stopping, tried to stop his army. So here we have the Xerxes was trying to stop the army. Again, in English, we just don't do this. We would tend to just say Xerxes and drop that. Greek also sometimes would drop the article, but that's when you were first introducing somebody. If we already knew we were talking about Xerxes, say we're reading Herodotus, and Xerxes has been on the table for a while, we can use this haw to say, oh yeah, the Xerxes, the one that we were talking about. That sounds weird in English, but this is something that the Greeks did quite often. Great, that should do it. So four uses of the definite article that are a little bit off from English. Um, so the possessive, we've seen that now with a few times with ten stration. On the one hand, it could just be the army, but it be, could, could be his, her, etc. Then we have denoting a class where we have hoi um, sophoi, maybe, the wise men. Um, wise people, wise men say only fools rush in. Hoi sophoi say only fools rush in, that sort of thing. Abstract nouns like hey, dikaiosune, where really what we just need, mean is justice, not the justice. And same with proper names. The nice thing is, as you see these in Greek, you'll know what to do in English because you'll know it will sound natural. The much more difficult thing is going back from Greek into English and remembering to put in these articles where English chooses not to. See you next time.